Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are going to talk about the implications of the Eastley by-election that occurred on Thursday evening. And we are going to talk about how the political landscape in Britain is changing for the better. Now, Eastley, as you know, was triggered by the resignation of a disgraced former Liberal Democrat MP, the Right Honourable Chris Hume, for his fiction of points, shall we say. So that mm. would cause the by-election. So you had the typical three parties, Conservative, Labour and Liberal Democrats respectively, who all were fighting for the same position. Let us be honest, that Labour was never a contender in Eastley. So it was presumed that the fight was merely betwixt the Liberal Democrats and the Conservative Party. Two coalition parties. However, UKIP pulled off a stunner of a second place victory, beating the Conservatives into third place and making the Liberal Democrats rather uncomfortable. Now, why some Conservatives can say this is merely a protest of, or indeed the Right Honourable Mr Cameron will himself say, nothing more than midterm blows, and he's arrogant enough to affirm that those Tories will come back. However, as we know, Cameron cannot get inside the minds of other Tories, so thus he cannot say that. But, what is of interest here is, is that indeed this may have been a protest vote, but what is clear is, is that the people are protesting against the Conservatives and the Liberal, well not so much the Liberals actually, it is clearly a protest against the political elite in Britain, which is more or less Labour and Conservatives. People did not want equal marriage. People do not want mass migration from third world European countries here. And no, people do not even want the European Union. Mr. Cameron wants all of it. He wants the European Union. He wants mass migration here. He wants higher taxes. And he wants equal marriage. These are not even remotely conservative. And that's the people so-called dinosaurs, as he calls us, go elsewhere. And where do we go? We go to Europe. So the significance of the vote is that, one, this has been the third election by election, the UK has come second, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. It is not a protest vote, it is a gaining of momentum for the UK. And indeed, conservatives are going to pay for their rather ludicrous acts of equalising things and their rather dismal handling of the economy. From the losing of our treble A credit rating to Britain being faced with a triple dip recession, the conservatives have indeed carried on with the old labour ways of spend now, never pay back. You keep off a fresh track for Britain. They offer the prospect of lower taxes, of controlled migration, of giving us the all holy vote on the European Union, and of actually giving Britain a chance. The Conservative Party want none of this. The Conservative Party are nothing more than an arm of socialism. Will they equalise? Will they spend? and where they would rather protect foreign aid and EU migration, EU expenditure, as opposed to the soldiers. Mr. Cameron would rather sack those of the British Army, the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force, as opposed to cut from Europe and from third world countries, such as Zambia, etc. So how can any soldier, if you like, vote Conservative, when Cameron doesn't give a damn for them, we should say. 
Indeed, Mr. Cameron and the Conservative Party would rather care for the, elect, for the unelected bureaucrat in Brussels as opposed to the British squadron who put his life on the line for you and I to have our say here, to speak our mind and to say what we want. Is that the society you want? Do you want a society where Europe dictates, where Britain is nothing more than a pawn of Europeanism? No, you do not want that, neither do I. And Eastley showed us that UKIP is making leaps and bounds. Indeed, a lot will say it was just a protest vote, as previously said, but it was more than that. UKIP would, should not have come second in any of the seats that they contested in the by-elections, from Rotherham to Corby to Eastleigh, etc. But they did. Now, if this was merely a protest vote, UKIP would be forgotten about. But no, they're gaining momentum at an incredible pace. New members are pouring in every week. Disgruntled Tories such as myself has left Mr Cameron's Liberal Conservatives and joined UKIP and many old Labour voters as well, who are equally disillusioned with the somewhat odious Ed Miliband and his rather horrid stance on Europe. However, what is clear from Eastleigh is that the centre-right wing parties gained more votes than the centre-left wing parties, including the, United, the uh, Liberal Democrats. UKIP and the Conservatives secured more of a vote, more of a share of a vote, as opposed to Labour and the Liberal Democrats, respectively. So thus, the people of Britain do not want left-wing politics anymore. They want centre-right. They want something that will care for you and I. And further to this, those who say Britain has become socially liberal. No, it hasn't. People did not want equal marriage. Indeed, some in the gay community even express their disillusionment with gay marriage. And yet Mr Cameron thought it was more important to push a unpopular thing through with both his party and traditional voters as opposed to sorting out the economy. So who do I blame for the economy being in the state it's in? Labour, Cameron likes to chant. Well, indeed, Labour may have put us in the mess that we're in. However, Mr Cameron has been there for three years, and it is he who is regression, regretting our economy back further. Sorry, that was the wrong word. It is him who is causing our economy to regress further. So thus I appeal to you, keep the UKIP momentum up, and make sure that the Conservative Party either goes back right or loses the next general election in 2015 and that we can secure a UKIP majority. Good afternoon.